everyone, it's Hannah and today I'm going to show you how to make this really cute felt owl phone case. I was inspired by Sarah from So Craftastic's Pop Tart phone case tutorial last week and decided to make my own version that isn't in fact a Pop Tart at all and make them owls because I think that is quite autumnal don't you? It is all completely hand sewn so you don't have to have a sewing machine to make it. It does take quite a while but it is totally worth it because they are so adorable. To start with you are going to need a rectangle of felt that is has about a centimetre border larger than your phone around the outside if that makes sense. And in fact you're going to need two of these because there is a front and a back very nice and then we're going to make the wings so this is another piece of felt that is just over half the width of one of those pieces of felt and just over half the height so a little over halfway on both height and width and you're going to need another piece that I've just cut out of normal fabric this isn't felt it's just got cupcakes on to stop the edges from fraying too much grab yourself some clear nail varnish and just go around all of those raw edges with the clear nail varnish. This is when the sewers who are watching this tutorial hate me. I'm sorry, I am an amateur and I'm all right with that. But I'm just gonna go all around the outside with some clear nail varnish. This is just some old clear nail varnish that I have. Um, you don't really want to use your nice stuff because, well, one, a bit of a waste and two, you're gonna get fluff on it as you can see. Fabric glue will also work. But yes, now I've got those two wing shapes. Very nice. And now we are going to be working on the lining of the phone case. I'm only putting lining on one half. I know this may seem foolish, but I'm only putting lining on one half. So I'm using a piece of fabric that matches my wing. It is the size of the piece of felt plus one centimeter border, which I believe is quarter of an inch. I might be wrong though. And I'm just going to cut the corners out so I can fold those edges under and hem those edges because I do want to hem those ones. They are getting a lot more wear and tear than the wings will. So yeah, I'm just going to cut out each of those corners. Snippy, snippy. And this is another part when the sewers of the, are going to hate me. I'm going to be using Pritt Stick to stick down my edges. This is not a replacement for sewing. I cannot stress that enough. This is not a replacement for sewing. This is just to hold it down for the meanwhile so I don't have a ton of pins. It is difficult to hand sew when there are lots of pins, I find. So I am just tacking it down with a bit of Pritt stick. I'm really sorry everyone. But it's going to be on the inside, you're barely going to be able to see it. It just adds a bit of strength and stability to the phone case. As in the fabric does, not the glue. But you can fabric glue this all together if you want to. It's not going to be as long lasting as sewing it, but you can fabric glue it. Um, but I will be sewing around the outside as well. And then I'm just going to put a bit of Pritt stick on the inside as well um, so I can glue it to the back piece of felt. Like I say, it's just my replacement for pins. I wouldn't do it if it was on the outside but it's only on the inside so I've done it. I'm really sorry everyone. Please don't hate me. Makes my life easier. Now we are ready to move on to the eyeballs. I found that the lid of my Pritt stick, conveniently, works really well as a guide for the size that I need. So I'm just tracing around that using a biro on a piece of white felt. Then I'm gonna cut them out. Circles are my nemesis. I'm not very good at cutting out perfect circles. lovely stuff. Now I'm going to grab a piece of black felt conveniently on my black background. I know right? And I'm just using a small spool of Gutterman thread and I'm, I don't have any chalk 
So I'm literally just pressing it into the felt and cutting around the outline it leaves. If you have a white colouring pencil or if you have any chalk, please use that instead. But yeah, you're going to need two of these as well. Try to keep them as round as you can. Ta-da! Eyeballs! I also cut out a small triangle of teal felt for the top, which you will see later I forgot to attach. Go me! So now we need a beak, which is just made from an, an orange piece of felt. Ta-da! Now we are going to start by sewing the cupcake wing on first, as it's underneath. So you're going to grab some embroidery thread. I don't need all six strands in the embroidery thread, I only need two. So to do that, just take two strands and untwist the thread. It's a bit of a ball ache, but worth it, because I think six strands is a bit too thick for, well, for this particular task. You're then going to thread your needle and knot the thread at the end. Now we're ready to sew around the wing. I don't know why this clip is so dark, I'm really sorry. But we are sewing up through the both the wing and the felt, and then down right next to it, as though you're doing a running stitch. But I'm actually going to be doing a blanket stitch. Sort your loop out. Then we're going to go up through the felt and through that loop it creates. The first one's always a bit messy. So then you're going to go through the, again, try to make sure it's lined up and equally spaced. This will make it look as neat as possible. I'm not the neatest at blanket stitch yet. I'm really sorry. But then up through the felt and up through the loop. Cleverly didn't catch that on camera. I'm very new to sewing tutorials. I'm so sorry, but I want to make more. So, I need to practice. But I'm going to go round this edge and the top edge. I'm going to leave the two outside edges. And so when you're done with that, you can go down into the hole where your thread has literally just come out of. That will sort of finish off that stitch for you. Then I'm going to sew back underneath the back part of the stitch and then sew through a loop a couple of times and then go through the rest of the fabric and the rest of the stitches and snip off any excess. And then once I've done that, I'm getting a bit ahead of myself, I am going to sew on the other wing in exactly the same way. Now we're ready to sew on the eyes. I've threaded a needle with some black sewing thread, the same thread that I actually measured the pupils with, and I've tied a knot in the back, and I'm simply doing an up-down stitch through the pupil, the white of the eye, and then through the back felt part. I'm attaching the eye all in one step because I'm too lazy. But you can just fabric glue this on if you want to. I just, I've lost my fabric glue, I won't lie. I lost it in the move. I'll find it at some point. So I've finished off my thread in exactly the same way as I did before and now grabbing the white embroidery thread again I'm going to do an up down stitch to attach the beak. I'm finishing that off in the same way as before as well. You want to finish off your thread between each of the eyes. You can't just take it over because otherwise your phone's going to snag on it and yeah, it's going to cause problems. So what I like to do is I like to trim the top part of the owl so you can actually see some of that back fabric poking through. Also gives them little tufty ears. So I just eyeball this completely. I fold it in half and then I just kind of trim ad hoc, curving up towards the end so we have some little ear spikes. And then we are going to take our back piece and a threaded needle with some more embroidery floss and I'm going to go through the fabric 
not the felt, just the fabric part to start with. So we can hide that knot. I'm just going to be doing a blanket stitch all the way around, or all across the top to start with. Let's not get ahead of myself. So yeah, just go through the fabric, you loop the thread over and sort your knot out and pull through. So needle in, looping the thread over and pulling through. See this is my theory on why it was okay to use Pruitt stick. Now we are going to go in through the front piece of felt as well. So we're going through three pieces of fabric now and yarn round and pull through. We're going to continue the stitch around the, both the side edges and the bottom edge, sewing all of them together. But my theory on why it's okay to prit stick the edges is because I'm sewing around it anyway. So that will hold it in place. I was just too lazy to use pins, which is completely my fault. But use pins if you prefer. Now I don't know why this bit is so blurry but I'm just sewing through my last corner part of attaching all the bits together just so it's symmetrical and now we are only sewing through the front felt part so we're only going through one piece of fabric. There we go, we're back, a camera adjusted um, and I'm going to sew all across the top and then just finish off my thread and trim off any excess. And there's your phone case done. La, 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 la. It fits my phone in wonderfully, keeps it nice and snuggly. Very nice. Yes, I do like that cupcake fabric, it's real cute. And this is the other phone case I made. As you can see, I completely forgot to attach that tealy, turquoisey part to the front of the other one. You just attach it as you're sewing across. There's no science to it, but yes, how cute. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to give it a big old thumbs up. Your support means an awful lot to me and why not hit subscribe? I post new craft tutorial here in the corner of craft every Sunday and sometimes a bonus one in the week as well. I would love it if you stuck around. If you do decide to recreate something using one of my tutorials, I would love to see a picture of it. So please feel free to post a picture on social media using the hashtag the corner of craft so I can see it. All social media links are in the description box below. And with all that being said, I shall see you in my next video. Bye.